in het theater aan het Spij, Den Haag, um, waar de Border Sessions plaatsvinden. Een festival om technology and society. Um, inmiddels een nieuwe gast aan de tafel aangeschoven. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Matthew Johnson. I'm a research scientist with IHMC in Pensacola, Florida. And, and what do you do? Why are you here? So I'm here to talk about robots, specifically humanoid robots, and uh, how those work and potentially will work in the future within society. And, and what sort of ideas do you have on this subject? What, 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 how, how will they work? So the, the work I'm presenting today is a disaster response, uh, and I think it's got a lot of potential. So previous disaster response scenarios like Fukushima, robots were totally ineffective and they were not usable. Um, in the U.S., DARPA uh, put on a competition, a robotics competition, to basically investigate how could they be useful, what would it take to make them useful. And that's so what was wrong today. with them? Um, they had an inability to get over terrain, so a difficult terrain. So most yeah. disaster scenarios are not nice, clean areas like <laughs> laboratories. Yeah. Uh, and you don't get to control the environment like you do in a laboratory. And so the challenge is how does your robot adapt to what will be an uncertain and unknown environment. And, and, and this is what you investigate? Yeah, this is what we investigated, and I'll show some videos today about how we did it. So, oh. so now they can, can climb mountains or rocks or things like that? Yeah, so my message today would be a little bit mixed. <laughs> so we do demonstrate a lot of cool stuff. We can actually show you walking over rocks and getting into buildings and doing useful work. Uh, there's a little caveat in that uh, we still have a long way to go, right? This is still very uh, new technology. It's got a lot of potential. Uh, but it's definitely far from what you see in the movies right now. Yeah. So, so what's, what are the main problems you've, you're facing? So uh, one of the main problems is power. So these things are very power hungry. They take a lot of power. And so that's a challenge. Uh, and then to, to build a good battery, you mean? Exactly. Battery technology has got a long way to go. Um, we had a very specialized battery that ends up basically being the equivalent of a bomb. So it's not something you can put around people very safely. So. Um, You know, b battery technology needs to come, come ways to help robotics out. Uh, hand technology is also very limited. Uh, the hands look, of the robot? Hands of the robot. So, you know, you look at the human hand with five fingers and very compliant and yet still strong. Robotic hands don't look like that. Our hand is a three-finger gripper. It looks like it's from the 1950s and it's still not strong enough for the robot we have. So hand technology is also a problem. And then uh, sensing technology is also a bit of a challenge. Um, specifically, how do you get Uh, sufficient data to the humans who are working with these robots remotely and so you need to have an effective network uh, for disaster scenarios that's not always the case so mm. how do you deal with that so, so a camera is not enough you mean uh, camera is certainly not enough uh, we do have lidar which gives us information but besides having the sensor data you also have to get it back to someone who can interpret that data a human being um, and so network connectivity will be a challenge in these areas once once disaster strikes. Yeah, yeah, you don't always have the Wi-Fi ready you when you center. You don't always have Wi-Fi ready. You move inside yeah. of a building, particularly an industrial building that's a lot of concrete and steel, and your network goes out. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that sounds like three huge problems. Because because batteries, is always we still struggle with batteries in, in our phones even, So yeah. and, and it doesn't seem to, well, we, we don't seem to get any nearer to a good solution. Uh, Well, hands. So, so where do you where do you look to find the answers? Um, so, you know, the first part is understanding the problems, and I think this project really helped uncover some of the limitations we have in those systems. And so, that alone is a starting point, right? We now know, you know, what kind of power it would take to power a vehicle to do this. Um, you know, hand technology. We we now know that it doesn't exist, right? There's been plenty of hands, robotic hands, on the market. There's lots of nice videos on YouTube of robotic hands. Uh, but they're usually connected to a very small, skinny research robot arm that's just an arm. Uh, when you apply it to a robot that's 170 kilograms and you expect it to be able to hold its own weight, those hands don't last, right? So, um, you know, that kind of tells us what the benchmark should be for the next round of hands that we develop. And then there's network connectivity. Um, obviously, we can put Wi-Fi in any Starbucks, but, you know, how are you going to make that Wi-Fi available or any network available when you go inside a disaster area? So yeah. I think there's some challenges there uh, for lots of different areas besides robotics uh, that we've identified just by doing the work. Yeah. So is, is, is the, the work you're doing, is that being looked at uh, all over the world by other people who think, well, once they found a solution, it will help us? Or, or do you look around you to... In, in, well, in, in the hope that someone else finds a solution. 
So we're certainly not going to find all the solutions that no. we do. We, our particular group does the robotics side of the equation. Um, but the competition that we were involved in was an international competition. There are 25 teams from around the world, including Europe, including Asia and the U.S. all together. So this is a very large effort from a lot of people looking at the same problem, which made it pretty interesting to see you know, 25 different teams internationally looking at exactly the same challenge and seeing how they tried to address it. And each team tried to address it slightly differently. And I think that really... Um, uh, gave it a good look from from a multi multinational perspective about how you'd uh, solve some of these challenges. Yeah, when when you uh, are still looking at the problem and still uh, have to do a lot of research, uh, well, that's usually a phase that um, well, a phase that needs money and it, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't earn money yet. Is, is, is that a difficulty? It is a huge difficulty. Yeah. So. Um, doing this work without funding is nearly impossible. It's an expensive project, right? Yeah. So DARPA, I believe, put about $100 million into this, right? And you need an agency like DARPA that has that kind of money. That's, only, that's the only way this happens, right? Yeah. You can't kind of do this on a shoestring because you simply won't be able to make the system you need to make. And so uh, a large research investment was necessary to make the advances, but it's also necessary to answer those questions of, are we ready? Uh, the answer is not quite yet. Uh, is it possible that we could be ready? I think the answer from the competition is certainly. Uh, we demonstrated a lot of really good work, a lot of teams did. Uh, and there was a lot of success from not just our team, but many of the other teams that competed. And I think we've shown the potential of the technology, which is really what the pro program was designed to do. Uh, the next step is funding the next round of investment, mm -hmm. uh, either research or business, uh, that will make this next round happen. So. Yeah, and, and how long will that take? How long uh, will, uh, or, or do you think it's doable to get money to, to keep going, or will you have yeah. to...? Yeah, you know, everything's possible, so <laughs> as far Or do you need as, you a good know, disaster close to home, for example? Will that help? Uh, unfortunately, we happen to have disasters all the time, so that's, yeah. that's nice. The question is, will they, uh, you know, Will that inspire the research money? Um, you know, there's lots of ways you can tackle disasters. Robotics is one potential uh, solution that can help out in the recovery process. The question is, is, is someone going to invest in that to make it happen? Uh, I hope so, because I think there's a lot of potential there. There's a, a lot of interest right now in robotics and automation technology in general with autonomous vehicles and drones and things like that. Uh, the technology is moving pretty rapidly now into the commercial market, so I'm hoping that with disaster response we can see a similar investment. Yeah, so it is a sexy enough on, uh, subject. Uh, I think so. I think <laughs> yeah. disaster response is pretty uh, interesting, largely because you're talking about lives and money. I mean, this is, you know, it's a, a pretty easy sell that this is an important topic. Yeah. Uh, all you have to do is wait a few months for the next major disaster, hurricane, tornado, nuclear accident, uh, tsunami, whatever the case may be. Once you have these disasters, they usually overwhelm human response, right? And so... You know, a lot of times you can't get people where you need to get them. It's not safe to get them in there. And so robotics is a, a sensible answer for how you do that. If you can't send in people, but you do want to send in help, uh, robotics makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, in 10 years' time, where will you stand? Where will you be with your work? I would love to see these systems deployed to actual emergencies and actually show how effective they can be. I think that's really the next step. Like I said, robotics has lived, particularly for disaster response style robots, humanoids, have mainly lived in the laboratories. Um, this competition has really demonstrated that they can get outside the laboratories, and I would like to see them uh, pushed, if not commercially, at least as research platforms that get deployed for actual responses. I would actually like to see them do useful work and help out in these scenarios. I think that would be a big step forward. Okay, so in 10 years' time, we can see them in action. Love to see one on the news actually saving a life. That would yeah. be fantastic. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Okay, tot zover. En uh, uh, blijf kijken, want straks een nieuwe gast.